Shall we go to the news? Yes. It's brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Eagle Mortgage is um, the standard bearer uh, and um, the uh, model of outstanding mortgage brokerage service. Holly Schneidwin and her team over at 114th and Davenport do an outstanding job with conventional FHA and VA loans. And um, doesn't matter uh, whether you are um, thinking about buying a house urgently or maybe down in the road, uh, down the road at some point in time, just meet with Holly's team and uh, see what you're qualified for. Let them coach you through the process. You can find them in person at 114th and Davenport or online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. Well, Trenton, uh, let's start with a couple of construction projects because that's one of the things Grom Hall listeners love to hear about. And the first one, Developers are planning a mixed-income neighborhood in the Elkhorn area, and this is going to be a $43 million project known as Capriana, and it'll soon rise on 15 acres near 210th and West Maple. What's unique about this is that uh, the plans call for 11 for-sale houses that would be affordable, but then 149 apartments, which would be luxury market rate. And so it's going to be a, an alliance between a company called Apogee and Habitat for Humanity. But what's interesting about this is normally you would think of the apartments as being affordable. These are going to be the single family houses that'll be affordable. That is an interesting concept. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch how it all plays out. But uh, like I said, 210th and West Maple Road is where that project is located. Got to have a good housing mix. Well, actually, more and more um, that is becoming the case. Uh, you know, as the prices have risen in the Omaha housing market quite a bit faster than usual over the last couple of years, that's becoming an issue um, about uh, affordable housing. You know, last year it was about 9.9% uh, increase in housing prices in Omaha. And that's, that puts us, as we mentioned on last week's show, 38th out of the top 100 metros. So that was existing sales. Um, I don't know the specifics. It just said the uh, the price of home sales went so up I wonder about by nine point nine percent. New home sales. I mean, celebrities' home. You know, my friends over at Celebrity. You know, I remember they were building homes under two hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Maybe they still are, but they, they, I know they they've gone over four hundred and some some people's new homes. No doubt about it. You get a lot more house for the dollar if you go the used home route, or should we say pre enjoyed house. Preoccupied. It depends on what you're looking for. Construction is now in full gear on the site of a long vacant 24-hour fitness club at 1718 North 118th Street. So that's that's right along the east side of 120th Street between Blondo and Maple. Some of you Stone may Gate. remember the old fitness club that was there. It has been mostly demolished. The base of it is being retained. And then plans call for a $35 million multifamily building to be constructed on top of what remains of the original building. Very cool. Six-story project, 150 apartment units, and they're going to use the indoor pool that was once part of the 24-hour fitness. So I think they're doing the same thing over in Alltech Business Park, 144th and F Street area. Same investment group, I believe, that are going to turn that into multifamily as well. On, on Turn the 24-hour fitness yeah. former building? That's interesting because I, I know uh, there is an apartment building or two already going up well, in all tech. I think Ted Grace, there's a big apartment project there too. So interesting taking this, you know, mostly business park, commercial park, some industrial park, and turning it into multifamily as well. So, so the if they are doing the old twenty four hour fitness Genesis South Club at one hundred forty fourth and F, that would be separate from the apartment yes, project sir. that's there right now. Okay, interesting, interesting. Well, it appears likely that the do space at seventy second and Dodge will temporarily relocate to the Milton R Abrahams branch library at fifty one eleven North Ninetieth Street. That's going to be necessary because. Pretty soon, they're going to tear down the existing due space building in order to make way for the flagship central headquarters library, which is going to be space, which is going to be amazing, state of the art. But they want to make sure they can continue to offer some of those services that due space uh, provides and people have become accustomed to. So it'll be kind of a transitional thing. Um, it has to be approved by the city council still. I, I suspect it will it's be. A I mean, the design came out several months ago and it, it was beautiful and Suppose they have a state of the art. I think it's like fifty feet tall, a, 
a warehouse all automated that they any volume or any book they can call up within two minutes. Yeah, that'd be like some some sort of Amazon technology almost. Yeah. Um, so right across the street to the north from the current Dew Space location and future flagship library location is uh, something we call the Crossroads. And KETV uh, put out a development update for the Crossroads this week. And I'll, I'll tell you what it uh, says, and then Trenton, you can kind of uh, um, tell you what you, tell us what you think that means. But first of all, sewer work at the Crossroads project has been completed, and street paving is scheduled to begin in May. Construction is already underway on a related project to widen Dodge Street westbound west of 72nd Street and to improve Cass, which is on the development's north side. Infrastructure work should be completed by the end of this year. First building should start going up in early 2024, according to KETV. Yeah, and I, and I think full build out or, or substantial completion, 2026. I know it's later than the 2024. They talked about um, uh, Frank Krejci, our friend, who was the co-developer, passed away. His family is still uh, very much involved, uh, Century Development. Um, and then Chip James and Lockwood um, are working on the project. And, and it, it sounds like the the horizontal project, meaning the sewer, the streets and all that stuff, will get done. And then I think you'll see some major announcements about the vertical portion of it. Well, when you're talking about half billion dollar or more projects, um, sometimes they just take a little longer than people initially think. And especially when there are a lot of moving pieces and and uh, and the landscape is changing. Well, around and, and, you. and not to mention what's going on with the office market. Not to mention what's going on with the economy. And uh, you know, some people have consternation. The good news is that overall, and I've been as busy as ever with retail and office projects, and people are buying dirt. And uh, there's a lot of cash, especially in Omaha, Nebraska. There's some people talk about how. The interest rates, you know, they're seven percent or six or seven percent for for commercial loans and all that kind of stuff. But the truth is, people are buying buildings, people are buying land. They still have a bunch of money, and if if you can't if you can only get a few percent in a savings account, um, why not try to make a little bit more? And uh, as Warren Buffett always says, you know, be a contrarian. And when people are uh, are buying, you may want to be a seller. There you, there you go. Financial advice right here on the Girl Omaha News. Regurgitated. And we finish with a story that will boost your civic pride. Get a load of this. USA Today 10 Best Reader's Choice Awards has selected Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium as the best zoo uh, in the entire country. Uh, the Henry Dorley Zoo's exhibit Asian Highlands was voted the number one best zoo exhibit and the affiliated Lee G. Simmons Wildlife Safari Park in Ashland was named the country's best safari park. So um, the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium cleaned up, uh, won all three big awards. You're welcome, because every time I got prompted, now, unlike a lot of political elections in Chicago and some other parts of our country, um, they encourage us to vote once a day. <laughs> and I took it seriously, and uh, I won't take all the credit, but I'll tell you. You shouldn't, because I probably voted four or five times myself. A day? No, you're only allowed to vote once a day. Okay, so congratulations. I'm sick of pe- – I know San Diego has a beautiful zoo, but I'm sick of people just assuming that San Diego has the nicest zoo. San Diego's zoo should be number one if you're only basing it on flowers and, uh, and uh, landscaping and cool tropical plants. If you look at the quality of the exhibits and the and the mix of the rare animals and all that, I think Henry Dorley blows them out of the yeah, water. And it's still growing. And uh, so last year in this same ranking, uh, Henry Dorley Zoo came in number two. So we beat that and are now number one. And then Asian Highlands, this is the fourth year in a row um, it has been named the country's best individual zoo exhibit. And this is the third year in a row that the Lee G. Simmons Wildlife Safari Park has been named number one safari park. So good job to um, Dr. Luis Padilla and all of his team 
at the at the zoo and the, the wildlife safari. You guys are doing a great job in making us proud. So it's great to be in number one. Just don't step in number two. And with that, uh, we wrap up the news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.